Pereiro uh, from the Central University of Venezuela. Uh, Mr. Cordeiro is uh, one of the most internationally known thinkers and especially uh, political thinkers of Venezuela. Um, well, we had a very interesting presentation just before with Aubrey de Grey. My take on uh, uh, longevity is that uh, if you ever get tired of living after 1,000 years, then you might as well die. Uh, but you have to have the choice, obviously. And that is the point which I think is very important. Because if life is boring, certainly death is even more boring. <laughs> then uh, we really have to think about this. Huh? Okay, but um, I want to talk about technological evolution, because biological evolution continues, but it is very slow. Um, coming from um, uh, South America, we, 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 we have also dinosaurs in southern Argentina and Chile, and, and if you look at the evolution of, the, of life on Earth, since our planet began about four and a half billion years ago, the first one billion years, there was no life on Earth. And then the first uh, bacteria appeared, and they basically ruled the world for almost uh, uh, three billion years. It's incredible. Until something really extraordinary happened, which is the invention of sex. Sex is a very important invention that permitted, allowed, uh, more variations in the evolutionary uh, timetable, and the, the many different species which have been appearing since that time. In fact, you can see we have been living, human species has been living for less than a million years, and uh, we are still evolving, but it can be even faster thanks to technology. Carl Sagan talked about this evolution in terms of a cosmic calendar. He said that if, if every month represents about a billion years, the, the history of the universe would be something like this. The Big Bang on the 1st of January, then uh, the Milky Way appears in March, our uh, solar system appears on August, and on September the first single life forms appear. Finally, in November, the first multicellular uh, life forms appear. And all the fun really starts in December. The 24th of December on Christmas Day, the dinosaurs appear. They disappear on the 29th. And uh, really, the most incredible day was the 31st of December. As you can see, at 10.15 a.m., the first apes appear. At 9.24 p.m., the first human ancestors walk upright. 10.48 p.m., the Homo erectus appears. And uh, basically here, 11, 59 minutes, 50 seconds, the pyramids were built in Egypt. So basically, it's really incredible how life in all its forms and the evolution is actually kind of accelerating. Two years ago, I went to visit Sir Arthur C. Clarke in Sri Lanka. Arthur C. Clarke is very famous for the three laws of the future. Uh, that he wrote almost half a century ago. Uh, since you all will be hu uh, humans, transhumans, and posthumans, I will show the laws in Spanish. Uh, fairly soon you will be able to do this translation uh, simultaneously, but in any event, many of you know the, the laws. I will just basically read them quickly. The first law, uh, when a famous scientist says that something is possible, he is probably right. But when he says that something is impossible, he is probably wrong. Second law, the only way to know the limits of the, future, of the possible is to venture beyond them and, and get up to the impossible point. And the third law, any sufficiently advanced technology is not different from magic. Actually, this third law has a, cor a corollary. If you see a technology that does not look like magic, is because it is not advanced. Uh, 30 years ago, there were no computers. 20 years ago, there were no cell phones. 10 years ago, there was no Google. And what is coming is actually even more exciting than what we have seen so far. 
The National Science Foundation and the Department of Commerce started working uh, and thinking about the technologies of the future. William Bainbridge, that will be opening the conference tomorrow at 9 a.m., and, and he's here with us, uh, he is one of the fathers of these ideas, which is called NBIC, Nano, Bio, Info, and Cogno. And basically, this deals with technological convergence. These four technologies are expected to converge in the next 20, 25, 30 years. Nanotechnology deals with atoms, molecules. Biotechnology with cells. Infotechnology with bits. And cogno or cognitive science with uh, neurons. And all these technologies are converging. And they will transform humanity. But what is more important, they will transform human beings. They will transform each one of us in ways on things